Hi again everybody, welcome to my latest video. Well once again, this video is part one of a new series. This series is going to be building up my new network. And my new network is primarily going to be focused around a rack that I'll be putting into my networking corner that I've shown a couple of times. And that's all coming out, even a shelf from that homemade bookshelf I have there is coming out. And I'm going to put in a 15U rack, which will include all of my network equipment. And it'll have space for my server and it'll have space for miscellaneous equipment, including two different network cable distribution panels. Well, in this first video, I'm going to accomplish two things, hopefully. I'm going to review the centerpiece of that new network, which is my new 10 gig switch that I purchased for that purpose, along with going over the blueprint to what this new rack configuration will look like. So I'm going to start off by going through the switch, the 10 gig switch. And what I purchased was this Netgear 8 port switch. These 8 ports can support everything from 1 gig through 2.5 through 5 and then finally 10 gig Ethernet. Now they're all RJ45 except for the very last one. The very last port is a special port, so I'll be talking about that one separately. So this video, I'm going to do the box opening and we will see how it looks. I have not opened this yet and how it can function. I have my backup editing PC over there, which has a built-in 2.5 gig networking on its motherboard. And then I've added a 10 gig adapter to this PC, but I haven't tested it yet. And I'll be showing all of that in future parts of this series, including the 10 gig board that I added. I have a second one of those and I'll go over that and how I get it to work as well. Well, let me start by opening this up and seeing what it looks like. So I got my handy dandy Swiss Army knife here, my opening tool, and I will slice the little transparent tape that they put on here. Let's see, is there any other ones around? No, it looks like just one. Okay, let's take a look at what's in here. We have what looks like a README first. It doesn't really say much. It says to download the Netgear software. Now this is not a managed switch. It's what some people refer to as just a dumb switch. There's no way of reconfiguring the ports in any special way. It has LED lights that are on each port to show you what type of ethernet speed connector is plugged into that port. But you can't set up VLANs and you can't do things like that, like I could do it my other managed switch that's only for one gig. And I think in one of the parts I'll be going over that configuration a little bit because there's a configuration I probably should change in that arena in order to make this work a little more efficiently. And it has a quick installation guide. It actually covers multiple models of this particular switch. But I'm going to go over that as I install it into the rack. It has a little... Whoops, what do we got here? Two things, we got the power cord. It plugs directly into the 110. It doesn't have a power adapter, which is good. I like it that way, it's cleaner. And it has the actual ears, is what they call this, to allow it to be connected to this switch so it can fit into a 19 inch rack. It's one U, which means it uses one rack unit, or I think it's about two and a half inches. Let me take it out of the box and we'll take a little look at it here pull off these little styrofoam protectors. I always save those boxes in case I have to return it. So that's not going in the garbage. We got here a piece of tape, it says Netgear on it. Let me uh, break through that. There's no doubt that I've opened it now. And here we go, uh, not much to it. It has the power connector, the 110 standard PC power connector in the back. It has uh, an air vent on this right side facing it from the front and it actually has a fan built into it and an actual indicator on the front of the unit to show whether or not the fan is having any problems or not. So if the fan were to you know, run into an issue then I think it's a yellow light or an orange light. From here it looks like it'll be yellow. The power on light is right above that. That looks like it's green. I can see the color sort of in the background of it. And then it has the actual eight ports and each port has to it. And I'll put it up on the screen here so you can see a close up of that. Each port has a set of two lights to it. And the way it works is if both lights are on, then it's a 10 gig connection. 
if the left light is on and the right light is off, and that's the lights right above each port, then it's only a five gig connection. And if the left one is off and the right one is on, then it's only a 2.5. And that's on with green in all of those combinations. If both lights have yellow lights on them, then it says that's a one gig connection. So I like the idea of that because I could quickly at a glance tell whether I have the right speed connector plugged into the appropriate port. It's as simple as that. I wanted to um, so do the box opening. Let me go ahead now and show you what my plan is for the rack. And then I will try to test this out and connect it up and see how it works. Just sitting on the desk here, I'm not going to put it into the rack. The rack is not installed yet. That'll be in probably the next part or maybe the part after that because I have to put the rack together, configure everything, and I have to tear that apart back there too. I may show some of that in, you know, sped up mode uh, in the next part. So let me show my plans, my schematic as I'm referring to it, for my new network rack. Okay, what I'm showing here is the actual schematic for my new network rack that I'll be putting into my network corner. And it'll be replacing all of the existing shelves that I have in there to hold the various equipment, plus a lot more. As you can see, the actual rack is this part right here. And it has what's called 15U, which are units of about two and a half inches each where you can put a rack mountable component. Now some rack mountable components use 1U, some use 2, some use more. But all the ones that I'll be putting in for now will only be the 1U category. For example, this power strip here which will be reversed. I'm going to put it in backwards so that from the exterior, all you'll see is the back of the power strip. All the plugs will be on the other side. Starting at the bottom of the 13th U, I have a shelf and that shelf actually goes back and has a, a backing to it and go, will go all the way across. This thing is going to be 16 inches deep, which I don't have shown here the depth of this, only the width and the height but I'll be able to put a lot of equipment on there. And the equipment that I have in mind right now are my two existing Buffalo NAS servers. They'll both be four terabyte by the time I do this. And they'll sit there and they'll be backup units to my main RD server, my main server that I have currently running Sigma NAS. Up on that same shelf, on top of a little rack that I already have, is really just a small inbox that works very well because it's all perforated in black metal. It will be modem to my ISP, my internet service provider. And right underneath that, there's room to put my little Raspberry Pi 4 that I have running Linux and will be my backup domain controller. With, of course, the RD server I've shown in previous series and videos is the main domain controller for the, my network at home slash office. Now underneath that, starting at 11, is the switch that I showed earlier in this video, a 10 gig switch that has eight ports on it. It uses one U. This one shows it with the uh, leafs on it, so it can fit in an entire 19 inch rack position or U. Underneath that is a cable management shield. Now that goes along with a 24 port distribution panel that'll have a whole series of keystone jacks on it of various types, but this particular one is meant for CAT7 only. I have it currently labeled that, and I'll probably put a label somewhere on the rack or in the wall behind it to indicate the same thing. The cables are of various lengths that I'll be using one or two foot. May even have some 1.5 foot, but I'm not sure. But the excess cable, as you can see, this is not going to be a foot even. It's going to be pushed into this cable management shield. And you'll see how that works. It's actually a pretty nifty little thing. And then the next three use the same configuration for the one gig ports. My existing TP-Link switch, which has 24 one gig ports to it. And underneath that, a cable management shield. And underneath that, that, another distribution panel with keystone jacks in it. This one is labeled CAT6 because I'm going to use this for all of the one gig ports that are coming in, which right now is a combination of CAT6, CAT5e, and CAT5. Eventually, I'll be phasing all of those older cables out, but for now, that one rack will have them all. Not all of them will be running uh, at one gig. There's a couple of ports I have there that still run at 100 meg, which is fine. The bottom 5U that's where I'm going to put my existing Sigma NAS server. It'll just be sitting there in the bottom of the rack. It's not going to be connected to it. On the wall behind the rack, I'm going to mount my existing temperature control system that I created. 
the airflow that I have indicated here is just tentative. I haven't decided yet whether the air really will be blowing in from this end and blowing out from that end. I may reverse this, and if I do, then the actual fans will be reversed as well, which means that uh, the ones where it's blowing out, you want higher in relation to the rack. They'll be mounted on half-inch plywood, just wide enough to support the fans, and it'll all be painted black, including a piece of plywood that'll be across the back wall, which will also be painted black so it'll all blend together very nicely. I also have something like my existing label printer and again this is all somewhat tentative. When I start putting it all together I may decide that I need to shift some of this around depending on how it all starts to fit together and you'll see that in later parts of this series. Okay here is the switch hooked up to three ethernet connections. The one that's in port one is a cable that's running over to my other one gig switch. And as you can see, it has the two yellowish orange lights on, blinking as activity happens, of course. The one that's in port three is actually connected to the PC I'm sitting at right now, which has the new 10 gig ethernet adapter on it. And the one all the way to the right with the white boot on it is in port five, and that's connected to my backup editing PC, which has a 2.5 gigabit connection to it. So as you can see, the switch has clearly identified them all, and they seem to work. Okay, let's open this thing up and see what we have inside of it. Don't worry, I won't hurt it. <laughs> well, it looks like it has three screws in the back. One here, one in the middle, and one in the end over here. I guess two on the sides, and that side as well. Okay, so let me take these screws off. Now this has an outlet back here, so I gotta be careful with that as I pop it up. Looks like it slides off. I'm just looking at the perforations here. That sort of gives me an indicator. So let me try pulling this back a little bit. There we go. And as I suspected, power connector over here, the AC power connector, going into a power supply. Now I don't know what this power supply voltages are. I could always test it. Here's the fan. This is a good thing to know where that's at. It looks like it's being held in by two screws. So we could always replace that. I may just order an extra one of those just to be safe. Looks like here's the motherboard. All of the ports, the eight ports, it looks like they're grouped over here in groups of four, at least the RJ45s. Let me turn this sideways and you see what I mean. So we have two groups of four that are soldered right into the, the motherboard. It's got a separate one for the DSFP connector. My guess that this is the main CPU underneath this heat sink. I'm not going to pull these heat sinks off at this point. It's got the standard modular cable connector, so the power supply should just pop right out if we buy a replacement for it. I'll look up and see if there's, there's a description of that. Most likely, if something's going to go, it will be the power supply or the fan. And here's a separate little board over here for the front panel LEDs. So the green power on and the, the fan fault, like a yellowish one, would be there as well. Not a lot here. I'm not going to pull anything else out. I just wanted to open up and take a look. Here's an air baffle on this side here because this thing has a perforated side over here, as you can see. It's a plastic piece here. It allows the air to be directed through here. But I don't like this wire being so close to the heat sink here. So as long as I got open, let me give a friendly persuasion to these cables just to get them out of the way so that they're not in the way of the heat sink. Close it back up again. And I'll, I'll screw it back together. Okay, that completes part one of this new series where I'm going to be putting in a new network rack with a bunch of new components to it. In particular, what I just reviewed in this particular video, which is my new Netgear 10 gig switch with eight ports. Unmanaged, but that's all I need for now. I may upgrade someday in the future, but this should get me through for a few years. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Be prepared for the rest of this series. I'm gonna start now doing some construction in the next part and making sure that I can get the rack at least roughly installed and we'll take it on from there. So don't miss out on any of that. If you got something out of this video, please do me a favor and at least consider subscribing to my channel. It would be very helpful, allow this channel to grow, and I can do more videos like this even better going forward. 
Well, until the next time, take care and be safe.